we hear about linear economy, vertical economy. But what is this circular economy? A little confusing, isn't it? Come on, join me. In today's video, we will decode circular economy. A circular economy is an economy that aims at eliminating waste through continuous use of resources. The big question is, how do we create a circular economy? Number one, we offer facilities where consumers can easily offload their old clothing. Old clothing that can be repurposed into new garments broken down into fibers, trims and notions from all of these old garments can be reused. For instance, laces, braids, buttons, inspire designers to remanufacture and recycle. For example, repurpose old blankets into coats, jackets, mittens, scarves, recycle denim, old pair of jeans into library bags, backpacks, satchels. Urge consumers to use, reuse, repair and dispose of responsibly. And how do we do it? Through change campaigns, seminars, workshops, forums, panel discussions. So if we think about the barriers, we know that there's a lack of consumer awareness and consciousness. And, you know, education of, of citizens is really a major uh, barrier for us. And we need to increase that, um, you know, just basic knowledge of how and what goes into making your clothes. The inherent complexity of implementing changes, right? How do we do this? There's a lot what is the biggest stumbling block in the road to circular economy? Lack of awareness and consciousness. Lack of information about organic textiles. Textiles that are produced in a responsible manner. Textiles that do not harm the environment, humans, flora and fauna, textiles that are biodegradable. How and where from do we source organic textiles? How do we know what are authentic organic textiles? This is where we need to create awareness about third-party validation, globally acknowledged third-party agencies that audit manufacturing facilities for organic textiles, for non-toxic textiles, agencies like SEDEX will audit a company for ethical production. We should make available a directory or database of ethical manufacturers and organic suppliers, both onshore and offshore. Everyone should have access to information about new technology, digital printing that does not give out toxic effluence, digital pattern making and marking. A computer can create patterns and layouts so efficiently that every inch of fabric is utilized, waste is minimized, very little offcuts. When we started as rookie designers, every evening at the end of the day, we would be creating parcels and what do you think these parcels would contain? Patterns and mock-ups which would be sent out to our clients. Then they would come back to us with alterations. And this toing and froing would continue till the final mock-up was approved. This would create an enormous amount of carbon footprints. Everything is simple. Patterns can be sent electronically. Fittings can be done over webcams. Space, you know, there are a number of brands, some of them small, some of them getting bigger, that are, as you say, are already doing um, lifetime repairs, that are already exclusively working with natural fibres, thinking about end of life, um, that are, you know, already doing made to order. And We should educate the consumer to buy responsibly, to invest in long-lasting garments, and thirdly, to do small repairs. You and I as consumers should buy from 
local business, small business and ethical manufacturers. We should get clothes made to order. We should buy everyday clothes and rent occasional clothing, maybe for events or for wedding. For example, how many times do we wear our wedding clothes in a lifetime? I personally have worn my wedding clothes just thrice at my wedding, at my brother's wedding and at my brother-in-law's wedding. That's it. And how much money do we spend on these clothes? Um, there's, to me, there's sort of like two aspects to my wardrobe. There's special occasional wear and then there's the stuff I wear every day. This is the stuff I wear every day. So you're talking about jeans, talking about tees, you know, those kinds of products, I think, invest in really good quality and let it go the distance. Um, and then, you know, start thinking about using rental models um, when it comes to sort of like that special occasion. We have to educate the CEOs, the big honchos of large companies. We have to convince them that the sustainable model, circular economy, is a viable business model. Sustainable businesses can make money. I will just add that I think we have to educate consumers, but we also have to educate ourselves and we have to educate the C-suite. Yes. The CEOs yes. of businesses and the boards of businesses need to understand that this is the future. Um, and so how can we make really great profitable transitions with better business models um, or circular business models that we can trial together? Last but not the least, we should detect and reject greenwashing. And what's greenwashing? Greenwashing is when a product or service claims to be sustainable, but the reality is far from that. As somebody who is representing a, an offering in the market, that I have to be transparent, that, I, you know, that we have to be, um, you know, put everything out on the table. Earlier this year, um, Rod Sims, who was the outgoing chair of the ACCC, um, you know, put not just fashion but all industries um, on notice uh, around greenwashing and that they... I have been talking about sustainability, organic textiles and ethical production since years. You and I together can fight the battle for sustainability and circular economy. After all, we have only one planet. We have to save it for our sake and for the sake of future generations. In Melbourne, right now, you could go visit someone's studio and you can see them making the garment that you pre order For a consumer to put in a bit of effort is actually this revelatory experience for them and, um, is, and can be really enjoyable, you know? It can bring back the joy in, in buying and making...